Looking for a hearty soup to warm you up this fall? My mom's pork rib soup is filled with veggies that will fill you up and it's incredibly easy to make. You're gonna love this. Hey everyone, I'm Flo, Judas behind the camera and we're all about simple food, simple faith. I love fall, especially the warm colors that are coming out in the trees. It's just so beautiful out there, but I especially enjoy warm, hearty soups to well warm us up in this chillier weather. I'm basing this recipe on my mom's beef stew that can be found in my cookbook, Chinese Homestyle. And mom used to make huge pots of her beef stew all the time. But I thought I would switch things up by putting pork ribs in it instead. So I'm starting with three pounds of pork ribs. And I found these like kind of spare ribs, um, riblets, whatever you want to call it, from Costco. They come in a package of like five pounds or so. So there's three pounds here. I'm just going to remove the silver skin off the back of these so that the flavor of um, everything can be absorbed better in the meat. And it's fairly easy to take off. Sometimes they're more difficult, but if you don't want to remove them, you don't have to either. You know, I was tempted to use all five pounds and use my larger um, pressure cooker to make this, but I thought, you know what? We should eat more veggies and we can use the other two pounds of spare ribs for something else, like steamed black bean spare ribs. And then that would be multiple meals, with the same amount of meat that you had to purchase anyways, because you're buying it from Costco. And you just make your dollar stretch further with different flavors. First, I'm going to segment the ribs. And then I'm gonna give them a rinse in cold water. And I have a pot of water boiling on the stove. And I'm going to parboil the ribs first for about five minutes. And the reason why I'm doing that is to remove the impurity in the bones and in the meat. And it just gives for a cleaner tasting soup without all of that scum that can float to the top. So we're gonna get rid of that first. And then so we're, when we're making our soup, it will be more clean. So while the pork ribs are parboiling, I'm going to get the rest of my veggies going and into the pot. I'm using one large onion. I'm just going to segment this into eighths. And we want to keep it chunky because I'm using the pressure cooker today. And because we're cooking, we want to make sure that the ribs are cooked until they are soft. We don't want the veggies to become um, too mushy. So I'm gonna keep these big. I'm also using a three ginormous carrots. And if you don't have these jumbo carrots, I like these because they're juicy and they're sweet, but you can use regular carrots. You'll probably use about six of them. That's my guess. So I'm keeping, again, I'm keeping the pieces quite chunky. going to make more room on the board by tossing them into the pressure cooker. I'm also using four stalks of celery and I'm just going to cut these into about two inch sections. I also had some tomatoes I wanted to use up so I have four Roma tomatoes. It doesn't have to be Roma. You don't even need to put tomatoes in there if you don't want to. Just gonna take off the little stem and cut it into quarters. That's not a quarter, that's a quarter of a half. <laughs> I want to cut them up into quarters. Remember, I wanted them chunky. <laughs> all right, so these little ones. Oh, they're gonna oh, well. be disintegrated. <laughs> well, they're all gonna be kind of disintegrated anyways. You have another chance here for <laughs> There. Don't cut them too far. Success. I have an ounce of ginger and, well, I want to say that it's thumb size, but maybe, and a little pinky size. <laughs> I don't know. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to smash them or you can slice them up if you like. I just want it there for flavor. I don't plan to eat it. So I'm just going to bruise them and throw them in the pot. I'll cut this one in half. 
All right, so the ribs were parboiled just in time as I finished chopping up my veggies. And I gave this a quick rinse under cold water because I wanted to get all the kind of scummy stuff off the bones. And we're gonna just dump it all in here. Do you think I'll fit, dude? Well, good thing you didn't go with a full five pounds. <laughs> yeah, true. Right, I don't think, I wouldn't have been able to fit it all in here. I would have had to take out the egg quart. Okay, I'm using about a tablespoon of salt. Okay, you can always salt more in the end if you need, if it's not enough. And some black pepper, maybe about a teaspoon, or until your arm gets tired. And I'm gonna cover with water. Now, if you don't have a pressure cooker, you can always make this on the stove and you would do exactly the same, except you would bring this to a boil, then whoops, lower it down to a simmer and simmer for about an hour and a half to two hours. About eight cups of water, maybe seven cups. I know that the vegetables and the meat are going to release liquid in a pressure cooker and it won't evaporate. So this will still make a substantial amount of broth. Putting my lid on, locking it into place, making sure this ceiling knob is on ceiling. And we're going to cook it on high pressure for 35 minutes. And that is it. Super simple, sort of one of those throw everything in a pot and let it cook. So after 35 minutes of cooking, we let it naturally release. If you don't have time to do that, it took over an hour actually to naturally release, but we had to go out and pick up the kids. So um, I would at the very least let it naturally release for 30 minutes because the pot was super full. And you don't want it to like explode all over you. Well, that's not gonna happen, but ooh, looks yummy. But that top layer is a little bit of fat, so I'm gonna remove that. See how there's like no scum floating around the top or even on the edge of the pot? That's because of the parboiling. Actually, there's not that much fat. Yeah, so a cleaner look yeah. and a uh, cleaner presentation and cleaner taste. Yeah, for sure. Oh, smells really good. I can smell the ginger. All right, I'm just gonna scoop some for dude to try. Look, even the tomatoes kind of held its uh, shape. I'm gonna garnish with some green onion. And that's it. Are you all ready for? Oh, definitely. The taste. The weather is changing. The forecast has been crazy extension of summer. And now we're facing down like what seems to be forever rain. Meals like this really hit the spot because they're warm and they're hearty. And uh, you know, this stew, uh, you could eat it on its own, but very much so it goes nicely with a whole bunch of carbs. Rice, of course noodles, rice noodles. Let's get into it. I'm gonna try some of that broth first. And there's a whole bunch of it. Guys, see this? This is just about one serving. Check out. <laughs> this is gonna feed the family for days. Wow. That is really good. It's sweet and very flavorful, but not in a salty way. It's just perfect, just perfect. Wow, that is so good. Let's try one of these uh, ribs. Oh, it's falling off the bone. Oh, I lost the bone. It just fell right off.
Whoa, that's good. Great flavor. And dude, you just put salt and pepper in this thing. Yep. Amazing. All right, next we'll try out a carrot. Ah, kept its shape and it's soft enough that I can carve it up with my chopsticks because I'm not barbaric. I'm not gonna put the whole thing in my mouth. Oh, hot. Mmm, melt in your mouth. Good, awesome texture. Mmm. Awesome, thanks dude. Yeah. Now you see why we kept the veggies in big chunks so they didn't melt away while pressure cooking. For a very similar recipe, my mom's beef stew, check it out in my cookbook below.